uninterrupted media in conjunction with uninterrupted writing presents LSU Odyssey Podcast with your host, Lonesome Dove Philip Sullivan. What's up, everybody? You know, um, right when LSU are, are hoping to, to, to make a big push in the transfer portal, um, <laughs> LSU's transfers aren't done yet. Um, and they're, they're, they're not done by any stretch just because of this. Um, Dwight McLaughlin, there have been whispers over the last few days I don't think anybody wanted to, be, to believe it, to be honest. Um, I don't think anybody believed it could really even happen. But Dwight McLaughlin Jr., LSU's current number one cornerback entering 2022, okay? This is a guy who will likely start in next season, just be an automatic starter for LSU, you know? And um, instead, Dwight McLaughlin, Nudie, who's become much beloved around the LSU program in the fan base, had a pick six against Florida, forced fumble against Alabama, really was showing a lot of growth at the back end of this year as he stood in there for Stingley and and took Stingley's reps. And uh, he's gone now, at least for now. At least for right now, Dwight McLaughlin Jr. has entered his name into the transfer portal. No um, real, you know, talk of where he's headed, although I will just jump right now and say Florida with Corey Raymond um, looks to be on the cards. That's that's something I've been told by someone. I have to keep that name off the record. Um, Probably won't be able to break that story when it comes down to it, but just because of who I'm talking to, but... Um, you know, if you ever see Matt Zenitz or whoever post uh, Dwight McLaughlin going to Florida, uh, I think you know where you got that from. Um, but uh, you know, just that's just just following what I was told is you know probably go with Corey Raymond to Florida, kind of like recent you know Trey Palmer transferring from LSU and looking like he's you know going to be settled there with Mickey Joseph up in Nebraska. And, you know, I'm also told that this is not the only cornerback who is going to be transferring from LSU. As LSUodyssey.com reported earlier today, me, our site, as we reported earlier today, Ray Darius Jones, you know, th- national champion, th- third year, junior. Only nine total tackles and one pass breakup in his in his career. Um, it, just at least seven appearances in the past two seasons. Um, we're hearing he will also be entering his name in the transfer portal. So you have LSU losing Derek Stingley Jr. with one more season of eligibility. We expected that. But at the same time, it hurt because Stingley never quite fulfilled what his next level that we were expecting. Um, While his next level was probably is probably winning the Heisman Trophy, because I believe he should have won that Thorpe Award in 2019. Not going to gripe about Grant Telpit winning it, no way. But I do believe that uh, the true best defensive back in college football was obviously six interceptions. Uh, one force, one one fumble recovery. Derek Stingley Jr. Uh, only allowing 15 catches out of 91 targets. Uh, pretty freakish. Only allowed four touchdowns directly as a freshman. Just four touchdowns. Um, you know, and two each in Florida and Alabama. Stingley was a freak. 
I will not listen to anyone tell me otherwise. Stingley is an all-time great DB at LSU. That's, I'm not saying he is the number one greatest defensive back in LSU history. That's what is so annoying about LSU members of the fan base because sometimes you guys just take shit without even reading it and just run. You know, you just you just read one word that just ruffles your feathers a bit, causes you some consternation, whatever, and you go with it. I'm, I made a post saying that Stingley was one of the best DBs in LSU history. That puts him next to a lot of different names. Suddenly it's, I've got about a hundred different guys who are better than him. And you think he's the greatest of all time? Blah, 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 blah. And it, never once did I say he was the bona fide greatest. Like, holy shit. Read what is being posted. My God, don't just take your imagination and run with it. <clears throat> but then you have Eli Ricks next to him, who was supposed to be our number one corner going into the next season, and LSU are going to be in a great spot. You know, five-star, likely going to wear the number seven if Keishon Butte isn't, and um, he transfers to Alabama of all teams. And now Eli Ricks is proving that he can't even take Alabama losing a title game. You know, one of his best friends... Bryce Young is on that team, and he can't even take them losing a title game. Like, bro, if you're going to suddenly be deleting all your Alabama pictures and going back into the portal, maybe you want to go somewhere, you know, maybe you want to come back to LSU, maybe you want to go, like, it doesn't matter anymore. That, that door's been shut. One of the most beloved, one of the most favorite LSU Tigers in recent memory for the fan base, Eli Ricks, goes to Alabama. It's just crazy. Around the same time, Corey Raymond leaves LSU, a place where not only was he a great Tiger corner himself, but Corey Raymond, he's got one national championship from 2007 from being, you know, Tommy Moffitt's direct assistant on a strength and conditioning team. So he's a part of that 2007 staff, and he's a part of the 2019 staff after he's very firmly affixed LSU as DBU with two five-star corners, Christian Fulton and Derek Stingley Jr. LSU's defense were able to shut down three-fourths of the field on every play. And uh, that 2019 defense does not get even close to the credit it deserves, and that is because of what Raymond was able to do. But over the last two years, Raymond's powers seemed to wane at LSU. Some of the guys we were missing, you know, we only signed LaTerrence Welch and Demarius McGee over the last two years at corner. Just two diff- just two corners. Okay, and it's because we had Eli Ricks. It's because we knew Ray Darius Jones was probably going to take that next, take that extra year, probably go even for four years here at LSU at, at the minimum. And then you knew you had Dwight McLaughlin, who was going to be that next guy. And then you knew you had some freshman depth. And then you had Cordell Flott, who you could also persuade to maybe come back another year, boost that. No, 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 no. Forget all that. LSU are going to have to rebuild DBU brick by brick. It's exactly how I told the LSU Odyssey official chat group. Today I said, you know what, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to rebuild DBU brick by brick by brick in Kerry Cook's and Brandon Steeple's vision, which might not be a bad thing, but it's always a bad thing to lose talents and young men such as you know Dwight Newdy McLaughlin. Believe me, the reason he was prevented from playing in the LSU uh, Kansas State Texas Bowl will absolutely just just make you extremely angry. Okay. Because he should have been playing in that game. And now we've potentially lost this guy forever because we didn't let him go play in his hometown bowl game. A game that was going to mean a lot to him going back to Houston. And so, we we have lost in one offseason, Derek Stingley Jr., Eli Ricks as a sophomore... Cordell Flott 
you know, ha- he did have his best season, but after 2020, you'd expect him to probably stay another year, considering he only had one interception, one forced fumble on the season. Considering Flott only has one interception in his entire LSU career. But, you know, throw all that aside, he was one of the highest graded coverage men in college football this year. That is just the truth. And, um, you know, it, it, it is really sad that Flott is going, but I get why he's going. I think more than anything, he didn't want to be at LSU if Derek, uh, if Derek wasn't. Remember, Cordell is a Bama kid, a Bama defector who came to LSU. I think, I think him and Derek, you know, they're best friends. And I think that's what this is about, is they want to go in the draft together. But then you expected that we'd at least have Dwight Nudie McLaughlin, right? That we'd at least have McLaughlin to build something off of. And nope, no McLaughlin either. And then, oh, well, we have Ray Darius Jones. He's the, nope, no Ray Darius Jones either. He's gone as well. Tonight, LSUodyssey.com will be posting an article in depth about LSU's DBU transfer portal shopping list. Who's at the top of that list? Who are the guys we need to get? And I'm going to tell you one thing right now. One of them has the same name as a legendary LSU safety. Okay. One of these guys' names is the same as a legendary LSU safety. A guy who's gotten a lot of flack for no reason, but a guy who is a legendary LSU safety. And he's flipping from Auburn. We've got two guys who are, you know, locked into LSU, who are going to be coming to LSU from inside the SEC West. Potentially a third. Um, It looks like Kerry Cook's... It looks like they're ready to, Brandon Steeples, it looks like they're ready to to change what DBU has been for some time and go into a new, into a new era of DBU. It's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be new. It's going to be strange, but I am willing to give this a chance. The names are exciting. Um, if you just look at what Greg Brooks put up, it's, it's very, it's very exciting. Tonight, LSUodyssey.com.